It's my great pleasure to introduce our MC and comic for the afternoon, Kelly Wilson. She's there in the green shirt. And Kelly is a wonderful writer. <laughs> Kelly is a wonderful writer and comic. And wasn't there one more thing? I can't remember. She's just all things to everybody. All things to everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good to see you here today. I am Kelly Wilson with Stand Up for Mental Health. And so I'm going to give you the spiel for Stand Up for Mental Health. We um, teach stand up comedy to those whose lives have been touched by mental illness. So peers and family members. Um, we look for humor in our experiences because once we find the humor, the more control we have over our days. So like today I was struggling a little bit this morning and my first instinct was to make a joke out of it. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. It was something about the tender strains of Eminem. I don't know if you've ever heard of Eminem. Anyway. <laughs> That's how you know you're having a rage PTSD day. <laughs> you're listening to Eminem and going, oh, so comforting. I love it. Um, so when we perform and tell our stories a joke at a time, others can relate and we can help shatter stigma around mental illness. So that's what we're all about. Uh, we do have a Facebook page, Stand Up for Mental Health Portland. There's a general Stand Up for Mental Health page, but that's the, the guy who created the program. That's his, and we have a Portland page that's just for our area. And our next show is at Portland Center Stage, Monday, June 6th. And what I love about Portland Center Stage, they are so flexible. They just want people in to participate in the arts. So if you have an Oregon Trail card, you can get a ticket to the show for five bucks. Um, they also offer $10 tickets, and then you can pay $20 if you want to. So I don't know. It's up to you. Um... I have been in a pretty constant stage of grief lately, just wearing dark clothes and having trouble sleeping and not eating a whole lot because my doctor told me recently I can no longer eat cheese. <laughs> so I never considered myself intolerant. Sorry, lactose. <laughs> I am the Donald Trump of cheese. So, I have been diagnosed with Port Portland, Portland's <laughs> traumatic stress disorder, which is a new one, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and anxiety, and um, low self-esteem. So, I love cheese so much that I think about mental illnesses as cheeses. So, post-traumatic stress disorder is like a lovely brie and... Depression is Gouda, and anxiety is shark cheddar, and low self-esteem is cheese whiz. <laughs> so I wanted to get some help from the community for low self-esteem, so I started a fun run, and nobody came. <laughs> so, okay, first we have, Deb, are you, you're next? All right, we have the lady who put this show on today, so let's give a big hand for Deb. Come on up. Thank you, Kelly, and thanks everyone so much for showing up. It really touches my heart. And I just wanna let you guys know that sometimes up here as part of the jokes, you may hear vague references to sex, you will not hear anything uh, graphic. I felt I should let you know in case some people are super sensitive about that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> okay, you know, I have not had much success with relationships. My boyfriend was secretly engaged to somebody else while we are living together. That is true. 
His fiance told me that she found him under Craigslist men seeking commitment. I wanted him to be committed, but you need a doctor to sign three forms. <laughs> Another boyfriend told me he was kinky. Well, I'm not kinky, but I wanted to make him happy. So I agreed to tie him to the bed post a few times and, you know, tell him what to do, order him around. Well, this wasn't enough for him. He kept wanting to, to go kinkier and kinkier and kinkier. So I drew the line at dressing in a plushy panda suit and popping balloons with my butt. <laughs> Over the years, I have figured out more about relationships after going through all that stuff I've gone through. <laughs> for like what I just told you about. <laughs> and that's only the tip of the iceberg. Well, they take a lot of negotiation. In my current relationship, I agree to make him dinner, and he agrees to stop bringing dead mice into the bed. <laughs> my friend got arrested for soliciting sex with minors. That is not a problem anymore because they closed the mine down. I'm sure you guys will not be able to believe this next sentence I'm about to say. You're going to be shocked. People used to say that I was a know-it-all. Can you believe that? Well, I would tell people to do things a certain way because I thought it was the right way to do it. This made it really hard for me to earn a living as a hooker, <laughs> as you can imagine. Okay, in the 1970s, there were all these interesting and sometimes really weird kinds of therapy. My dad was a psychologist, so one day my siblings and I w were with him in his office, and suddenly we hear this really loud blood-curdling scream, and we all froze. And dad says, oh, come on, don't worry, that's just the primal scream therapy group. And the dentist next door was really pissed off. <laughs> he said that they were stealing his thunder. I have a friend who posted online looking for a roommate. Being a good friend, I helped her sell herself to prospective roommate people. She went for $1.85. My mom only listened to classical music and opera. She did not like any other kind of music, ever. So imagine my shock when I'm grieving at her deathbed and I open up a birthday card that someone sent to her and I hear, celebrate good times, come on. That really happened. As Neighborhood Watch Captain, I have seen a lot of strange looking people lurking around. We have some guys with ZZ Top beards drinking 40s. We have people peering in the windows at all hours. And I'm pretty sure that they are selling drugs on the corner. And that is just the cops. <laughs> I worked in Nike's public relations department for 15 years. <laughs> I guess that is funny. <laughs> well, after that, I went to work at a suicide hotline. When someone called and said they were suicidal, I'd say, just do it. <laughs> I had a good success rate. I could not understand why did they fire me. <laughs> okay, uh, my doctor told me, sorry, scratch. My doctor told my husband that he had to radically change his diet. He is bummed because he cannot eat meat or dairy, soy, gluten, corn, oats, rice, quinoa, potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, nuts, or eggs. Poor guy. So I bought him something he can eat. Edible undies. Thanks, you guys, for being such a great audience.
you, Deb. Just do it. Just do it. So I mentioned that I did a fun run for low self self-esteem and nobody came. And I was like, come on, guys. Everybody shows up to depression walks because <laughs> depressed people don't run. <laughs> and they don't finish races. So I wish I was manic depression. Depression. It's Friday afternoon. <laughs> I wish I, w I had manic depression so I could get something done for a while. <laughs> done once in a while, including this joke. I just want to do it. Okay, so next we have, I'm just going to end it. Next we have Jenny. <laughs> She's going to do a lot better than I just did. <laughs> Let's give her a hand. <laughs> I think this is coming down again. How's that? Wait, I'm on my tiptoes. Okay. Hi, my name is Jenny, and you have to spell it right. It's J-E-N-I. When I was born, my mother named me after Jennifer Jones, an actress in the 40s. And my brother said, um, just don't spell it J-E-N-N-Y, because that's like a female mule. <laughs> and so she made me spell it funny, and he never teased me about my name. He teased me about my nose. <laughs> He'd say, Jenny Wren is a hen because she has a chicken nose. And well, it looked funny on a five-year-old. It really did. And... Um, I'm still in therapy. <laughs> I'm in therapy. <laughs> We're waiting for him to grow out of it. He's only 74. <laughs> anyway, I heard that the guy that uh, does the Aflac duck voice got fired. Aflac. So I had auditioned for the job, but um, they said I charged too much. I figured with my nose I could double bill. Um, I have, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> I have attention deficit disorder, and I, I don't think of it as a disorder. My mind isn't really defective, it's just fester. And, but it does make it hard to sit still and wait and wait. It's very difficult for me. That's why I got fired from my last job. I jumped out of the cake too soon. I was, um, the, every school has to have a weird kid. I was the weird kid. And I hated playing all those stupid games with the other kids. I'd never win, except I'd win in hide and go seek every time. They wouldn't try to find me. Um, but I did pretty good in musical chairs. They always let me keep my seat. Of course, it was in the corner. Um, sorry, I got it. Okay. I did like tetherball till they tied me up to the pole and used me for the ball. <laughs> and I never liked to do my own schoolwork. It was boring. What's the fun in that? So I'd do the other kids' work. Cleaning their toilets was the worst. But high school, high school was better. It wasn't as horrible. But I never got to go to the prom. I couldn't find a babysitter. Okay, <laughs> stop me. Um, Let's see if you've ever heard this one. When I was a, a kid, my dad would say stuff like, um, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? It's like, oh, okay, no, um, thanks anyway, but I'm good. I'm good. I got, I got something to cry about, thanks. <laughs> and how about when you had something really important to say and the grown-ups would say, wait your turn, and I'd say, but, but, but no, it's really important. Well, you can wait until we're done talking. But I'll forget. Well then, wait for it. Here you go. It must not have been very important. Uh. Ouch. Okay then, shall I come back when the fr flames reach the ceiling? <laughs> but my mom would, would try to cheer me up. She'd try to read to me, but... Anne Frank's diary really wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> and what kind of a good night story is, what kind of a bedtime story is good night doom? <laughs> Laughing at my own. That's okay. <laughs> I read an article a few years ago about how laughing is actually a type of seizure. 
think about it, you you double over you're convulsing you um you're making involuntary faces and noises and sometimes you pee a little if you're my age <laughs> yeah a lot of people are younger um anyway that that's how i can tell if i did a good job here i'll uh, just check the seats after i leave and <laughs> If they're all dry, then I didn't do such a good job. <laughs> so last week, I was attacked by a gang of circus people. I had seconds to act, so I went for the juggler. But I did meet a very nice, polite clown. He was, he was a gentleman. He opened the door for me. I thought it was a nice jester. <laughs> so I'm going to close with a Portland joke. What is the difference between Portland and yogurt? If you know this, say it with me on three. Yogurt has more culture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. I do want to tell my cat joke. So, do you know who does depression really, really well? Cats. I'm really jealous of my cats. Because they come up to me, you know, they snuggle with me, they start purring, then all of a sudden they get up and scratch my face and run away. And I go, oh, cats. But if I do that, I'm a psycho. <laughs> if I sleep all day, there's cause for concern. If I go out in public without my pants, I'm arrested for indecency. If I lick myself repeatedly, I'm gross. <laughs> so cats have it good. Next we have Molly McNabb, one of our, I don't know what class you were in. Never mind. She started a long time ago. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I keep my comedy simple. I don't improvise. I don't use props. I don't do voices. I hear voices. <laughs> I just don't do them. <laughs> My name is Molly D. McNabb, MD. Little did I know going through med school, the MD would actually stand for manic depressive. <laughs> yes, I actually graduated from medical school and worked as a doctor for a while. Too bad there's not a lot of work for a doctor that spends more time hospitalized than her patients do. <laughs> being a doctor and being a patient, too, is really hard. I know when I know more about something than they do, which is always, I seem to think I can be a doctor to myself, which is probably why I end up in the ER frequently. And nurses on the psych unit always tend to think I'm delusional. For some reason, they don't take me seriously when I say, no, really, I am a doctor. <laughs> Speaking of medical school, I have a lot of debt. And living on Social Security, not a lot of ability to pay it off. So I get a lot of collection calls. They typically go like this. <sighs> Hi, is this Molly McNabb? <sighs> I guess. Could you provide your date of birth for identity purposes? At this point, I realize they're going to try to get money out of me with little result. Dr. McNabb, I'm calling you because you have an outstanding student loan balance of $356,542. And I'm wondering how you'd like to take care of that today. <laughs> Visa, check by phone. Uh, well, I have $12 left in the bank until next month, so I could give you 
two dollars of that would that help when do you think you'll have the money should i call back next month i'm looking forward to our next chat we need to talk about all those people on welfare that you see in the grocery store line whipping their food stamp card out of their (laughs) designer purses while holding their iphone and buying organic quinoa holy crap that's me (laughs) It's been a long way to fall from being a doctor to being on welfare. I used to think about all the places I could go to dinner. Now I think about all the ways I can cook a potato without electricity. (laughs) Guys, about a month ago, I was on the verge of homelessness. I was all set to move into this house, and it turned out to be a crack house. Long story short, You can't turn a crack house into a crack home. (laughs) But I was one of the lucky ones. I quickly found a place to live. It's like, it's it's a 180 square foot room. It's in a building for people with mental illnesses and which I clearly qualify for. (laughs) And uh, so I just have to describe it a little bit. So. It's actually split into two rooms. The first is a kitchenette, um, so stove, no oven. Um, Kitchenette, bathroom, utility room, entryway. Let's call it a foyer because we're fancy people. Um, So this is so small you could like fry an egg from the toilet. (laughs) Like it's really small. And so you pass through this grand room into the living room, bedroom, family room, dining room, great room. I don't know. Let's just call it every room that's left in the house. And um, I, believe it or not, share this space with a cat because, of course, I have a cat. (laughs) And (laughs) so notice I didn't say that I have a shower in my room because those showers are out in the hall that I share with 38 other people. And um, so when I was moving in, I was a little concerned that like, there would never be time to get into the shower. But if I've learned anything from living with a bunch of other depressed people, nobody ever showers. We all, like. Like, nobody ever showers. Like, I never shower. Those are the cleanest showers I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) On the off chance I do shower, it's open. (laughs) It's fine. And it's clean. Yeah, great. So um, I've learned a little something about living in that, uh, about myself living in that building. There's 138 people that live in that building. And uh, (laughs) I'm not so good at making friends. I'm just going to say it. I'm not so good at making friends because apparently, like, to make friends the standard way, you, like, have shared interests with people and you, like, go up to them and you're like, hi, my name is Molly and I like dogs or whatever you do. I don't know. Is that what you do? I guess that's what you do. And, uh, no, I overshare. I'm like, hi, uh, I don't know how to give myself an enema. <laughs> And then I and then I spend the next five minutes like acting out what I tried to do. <laughs> and then they have to be friends with me for life because now they have blackmail material. Uh oh, so now you all are friends with me. <laughs> you can have my phone number after the show. I'm a really good friend though. Very loyal. I'm a really good I don't know, designated driver. Okay, no takers. (laughs) Okay, so um, believe it or not, I don't have a lot of friends. And uh, when my blackmail friends are avoiding me and uh, 
when my comedy friends that I do have are busy at their comedy shows, uh, um, I can get a little lonely on a random Saturday night. And you know, I'll sometimes I'll just pop some popcorn and call the crisis line because they're always available. And uh, you know, um, you know, because sometimes you just really. Uh, I'm always kind of in a crisis mode anyway, so I'm not lying, but sometimes you just really have to know, like, whether Zoolander 1 or Zoolander 2 was better, <laughs> or, like, whether you need to buy white or wheat bread, and so, <laughs> I've, c I've, you know, I mean, I know I'm using it more as an existential crisis line, but, um, so, I've, I have found that you you kind of have you come across one of three people on the crisis line, and I think I just have to act them out for you, cause like, okay, so first is the new lady. Okay, so what I hear you saying is you're sad. I'm like, duh! I just said that. Okay, so you're gonna get nowhere with the new lady. So you just politely hang up. She just got trained. You just politely hang up and you call back later because your Saturday night's not shot. <laughs> so you call back later and you're going to get this lady, the cheerleader. Okay, what coping skills do you have? Do you think you can take a shower for me? Lady, I've been taking showers my whole life. I think I can take a shower. So, do you think you can make yourself a nice healthy snack? If she could look at me, like healthy snacks are totally not my forte. <laughs> but I think I could probably figure one out. Okay, take a shower, make a nice healthy snack, and call us back if you need to. Of course I'm gonna call back, it's my Saturday night. It's only 10 o'clock. <laughs> so you call back, and you finally get the unicorn. This is a unicorn. It's a guy. This is important. It's a guy, and his name is Dale. It's always a guy named Dale. <laughs> Dale is special. <laughs> you have to be a little careful with Dale because he might get a little... He might get a little worked up and send you to the hospital on the first go round. But Dale will stay on the phone with you all night long. Right. Dale is awesome. But you just have to keep reminding him that you're in crisis. And you could be like, Dale, I'm thinking of doing something. And you could be like, I'm thinking of filing my nails. And he'll talk you through that. And <laughs> he'll talk you through that. And the, the cool thing about Dale is that he'll call you back three days later to check on you. And he'll be like, hey, Molly, how'd your cookies turn out? You'll be like, Dale, they were a little doughy. I don't even have an oven. <laughs> so, guys, I called the crisis line a couple weeks ago. And I got Dale first try. But things didn't go so well with Dale. And he called me an ambulance. <sighs> I ended up in the hospital. And when you get out, never forget your phone at home when you go out for a day of errands and a bite to eat. Or your missed calls from your mom go something like this. 10 a.m. Hi, honey, it's mom. Call me back when you get a chance. 10.45 a.m. Hey, you must be busy. Call me back. 12 noon. Something's wrong, isn't it? 1.45 p.m. Of course, I trust you take care of yourself, but are you taking care of yourself? 2 o'clock. Okay, since you haven't called me back, what do you need me to do? What hospital are you at? What did you do already? 2.05 p.m. Okay, I've called the police and the state patrol. You're too old for an amber alert. Where are you? 2.06 p.m. Okay, I've got your brother flying in from New York to be with me. 
Please call if this is some sort of sick joke. It's not funny anymore. I didn't even know there was a problem until I arrived home to the candlelight vigil on my front lawn. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. She is not licensed or insured, everybody. Here for an <laughs> is anybody married in here? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, not anymore. <laughs> Mental illness can be hard on a marriage. Like when I was younger, um, I was pretty conservative, and I thought, oh, 50% divorce rate, that's terrible. It's heartbreaking. But after being married for 20 years, I think 50% is pretty good. I was like, dang, a lot of people aren't making it. Um, my husband and I record shows to watch together. I don't know if you do this with your spouses or significant others. And then sometimes I just want to watch The Bachelor by myself. But then the DVR like shows in big blue letters, watched. So thank you, Comcast, for ruining my marriage. I know, it's sad. My husband, I'm depressed, so I don't want people over to my house. But my husband does. He likes people, whatever. <laughs> so he decides to have some kind of get-together, and he starts whining. Oh, I have to plan the food. Oh, I have to buy the food. Oh, I have to prep the food. Oh, I have to cook the food. Oh, I have to clean the house. Oh, people are coming over. Oh, I have to serve the food. Oh, I have to clean up after. When am I going to get my workout in? When am I going to do this or that? And I go, oh, you had to be a woman for a day. <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> That's so hard. But um, people with post-traumatic stress disorder don't relax. Very stressed, obviously. So my husband helps me out a lot to relax in bed in the middle of the night while he's snoring. Because there are these <sighs> exercises that you can do called clinch and release. So you clinch all your muscles, and then you release. And you clench your muscles and release. It's supposed to relax you. So while he's snoring, I just, I just put my hands around his throat, <laughs> and I clench and release. And I clench and release. And it is very relaxing. Well, thank you guys for coming to see Stand Up for Mental Health. I hope some of you sign up, and we can have a class. If you like this video and want to support North Star, please go to northstarclubhouse.org and click Donate.